So how exactly do you turn all of this to this? Now this simple guide will guide you on how to build your first PC in no time. Let's go check it out. Now all you need is a cutter just to cut off all the excess cable management stuff, especially cable ties. A decent Philips magnetic head screwdriver just to pick up all the loose screws. Some decent cable ties for cable management of course. And of course a blade or a pocket knife. Now here are the few things to take note when you assemble your motherboard. We are using the MSI Z270 Gaming M3 motherboard that supports the current generation of KB Lake processors. Now this is your CPU socket which is located at the top of your motherboard, usually at the top left of your motherboard. Now this one right here, the big ass one, this is actually your 24 pin socket which is usually located at the top right, I would say the first upper quadrant right of your motherboard. Now this one right here, this is your SATA port, which is generally where you connect your SSDs or your hard drives and stuff like that. Now you also want to take note of the PCIe sockets as well. Now in this case, this particular motherboard has reinforced PCIe sockets to provide some isolation, which means less interference and also having reinforcing properties for bigger, heavier display cards. Now for the newer gens of motherboard, they do also come with an M.2 slot, which means you have the option to either use a traditional SSD or hard disk or use an M.2 card instead. Now, the tinier PCIe slots are for expansion cards. Now, you can either use them for storage or you can use them for other expansions such as sound cards. Now, these pins right here, they're actually called headers, which is generally where you plug in your front display cables and of course, your fans. Now, when you buy RAMs, be sure to check the compatibility. In this case, this motherboard supports DDR4 RAMs, which are the latest or current generation of RAMs. Now generally, most builders would actually plug in their CPU coolers on the CPU pin. Now here's an overview of the rear section of the motherboard. Now the I.O. shield, or some people would call it an I.O. plate, gives you an overview of all the available input on a particular motherboard. Now jumping into processors, we are using the i7 7700K processor which is on the 1151 socket. Now this is the current generation of processors so hence why we are using it. So which direction should you install your processor? Now line up the notches or triangle on the processor with this socket. Now depending on the processor and socket you are using, you may have several notches around the edges or a small triangle in one corner. Now once you're done, you securely tighten the retention arm simply because you don't want the processors to like fall out or the socket to go loose. Now we're actually using the Corsair Vengeance DDR LED RAM for this particular build. Now securely fasten the RAM sticks until you hear a click sound on the socket and you're pretty much done. Now what I personally prefer is to mount the cooler sockets as well before mounting the motherboard on the case. Now just to take note on the multiple types of brackets for your cooler, they generally come with an AMD and also an Intel socket. So pick the right one and fasten all the screws and remember, do not overdo it. All right, so let's prepare the case or chassis. Now we're using the Fantex Eclipse P400, which fits up to an ATX motherboard and has plenty of room for cable management. Now be sure to fix your IO plate at the rear section of your case first. Now power supplies are probably one of the most important components when building your PC. Now without a power supply, you pretty much can't use your PC because technically there's no power. Now our choice for this build is the Superflower Lidex 650 watt fully modular PSU. Now fully modular Modular means the PSU comes with no cables pre-attached and you can only attach the ones you need. It is also more expensive though but it also gives you more options allowing you to only install the cables you need and keep airflow and cable management to a maximum. Now be sure to direct the PSU fan to an exhaust for optimal airflow and cooling. Now this is also a good time to redirect all your cables such as the 24 pins and your 8 pins. Now you want to start mounting your motherboard onto the case and make sure you have all the standoff plays according to the size of your motherboard. Now most cases today would come with a pre-screwed standoff so that saves you a bit of time. Now you begin by plugging in your 24 pin cable onto the motherboard. Next, the 8 pin for your CPU. And of course, the remainder pins such as the USB 3, HD audio, and your front panel pins. Now be sure to do a quick polarity check just to make sure that you get all the polarity right for your pins. Next, you want to plug in your SATA cables for your storage disk. And of course, mount your hard disk onto the whole dedicated base. It could either be at the front of your case or at the back of your case. Now we're actually using the Apacer Armor SSD as it is one of the most value for money purchase for solid state disk at this point of time. Now you can either mount the SSD at the back of the case or on the front just like what we did. Now give it a quick look just to see if all is in place and you can move on to your display cards. Now our choice of display card is the Gigabyte GTX 1070 but really any other display cards are pretty much fine too. Now remember to unscrew the rear panel to accommodate your display card before fitting them in. And of course you do not want to forget the PCIe 8 pin cable to power up your display cards. Now cooling wise, we went for the ID Cooling 240L. Now it does come bundled with decent fans or reasonable fans, not great but it does the job. Now apply your thermal paste 
just a pea sized space would do it and start spreading it around with your fingers. Now some may prefer to just mount the heatsink on the processor but given our climate and the chances of an uneven spread, we sort of use our fingers instead. Now be sure to pre-place your radiator so that you can get an estimate of how the two hoses will look like. Now double check the direction of your fans and you're pretty much ready to mount them. Again remember, do not overdo the tightening part. Now moving on to cable management, remember to pull all the cables to the back prior to tying them in place so that you get a much cleaner look. Now this is where zip ties actually come really Really, really handy. Now some cases like the Corsair Carbide does have a dual chamber so you don't have to actually worry so much about rear cable management but in this case you pretty much have to. So here's how the front section of the PC should look like after your whole cable management. Now finally you turn on the PSU switch and you boot the whole PC up. Alright guys, you are watching a simple PC building guide by Tekan Start. It means press start. I'm going to leave all the links for you to purchase all this stuff and you can of course go to eTech PC and buy it. I'm going to link them all up in the description section below as well. Give me a big thumbs up if you like this video, man. If you dislike this video as well, let me know why in the comment section below. Anything else, drop me an email at myingamebestgiller at gmail.com. It simply means playing games are awesome. And of course, hit the subscribe button too and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.